It's May here in Portsmouth, and that means there are plenty of events celebrating our city's history and cultures, such as the 31st Annual Moja Festival, and one event that's been taking place annually for 139 years. We'll tell you all about it right here, right now, on this episode of Portsmouth Now. Welcome to Portsmouth Now. I'm your host, Rob Lauer. The Emoja Festival, Portsmouth's three-day celebration of diversity, unity, and African-American culture, will be held May 26th through the 28th on Portsmouth's beautiful downtown waterfront. We're very pleased to have, as our very first guest today, Mayor Shannon E. Glover and Vice Mayor Lisa lucas Burke to share their thoughts on what has become one of the city's premier annual events. Hello. I am Lisa Lucas Burke, I'm Vice Mayor in the City of Portsmouth, and I'm here to talk about the upcoming Umoja Festival that's going to be held right here at Festival Park the fourth Saturday in May. We're here in beautiful downtown Portsmouth, Virginia at Atlantic Union Bank Pavilion and Festival Park. Umoja is our Unity Festival where we bring all of our citizens, our visitors, and our guests right here to Portsmouth to enjoy the festivals of an African festival. Uh, Yemoja is the unity that brings us all together. There is an authentic beginning. We bring in our elders and they actually start the festival. They give us permission to host this festival every year and it gets everyone so excited. It's great artwork, it is great African attire, it is great ethnic uh, food, it is great uh, roundabout music and even a gospel fest ending out on Sunday. So in traditional African culture in the village, whenever there was an event held to commemorate something special, the event had to include the elders because in the culture, the elders were the ones who gave permission for things to take place within the community. So as a part of the drum call and the coming together of the elders with the leaders in the community, we are essentially giving permission being given permission by the elders to conduct the Yemoja Festival. I always attend this festival. I come as a citizen, I come as a council member, I come as an excited citizen just to enjoy the festivities of Yemoja. Yemoja is, is unity and through unity, we want to bring everyone here to Festival Park on the weekend of May the 26th, 27th and 28th to celebrate not only African culture, but to celebrate our community. There'll be food, there'll be activities, there'll be individuals that come from different communities just to learn about what Yemoja is really about. And we want to highlight that here in the city of Portsmouth. You know, we have a saying in the city of Portsmouth, Portsmouth is for people, all people. And as unity is demonstrated here on that weekend, we want all people to participate. This festival is absolutely free. There are vendors, there are food trucks, there is great music, all types of music. And then there's a special event that's gonna be held that is a ticket event that you don't wanna miss. It's gonna be Boys the Men this year. I'll be here with my family and my council and other representatives from the city. So please, we encourage everyone to come down and celebrate our Umoja weekend and enjoy the festivities and just have a good time. It is very accessible. We have parking garages all within the downtown area. We have on-street parking. Um, it is accessible to all of the areas, uh, whether you're coming by train, foot, bus, or bike. Uh, we want to make it accessible for you to get here. I'm inviting everyone to come and join us. We're looking to have really great weather. Um, it leads us right into the Memorial Day weekend. So come on and kick your weekend off with the Yamoja Festival with Portsmouth on the fourth Saturday in May. Actor Stephen Alexander joins us next to tell us about a new musical that's being presented as part of this year's Emoja Festival. Stephen, welcome back to Portsmouth Now. Thank you so very much. Now, I understand that you and some others are part of a show that's being done this year at Emoja. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We're uh, last year at our, we had the Heritage Stage last year. Mm -hmm. That was the 2022 Emoja Festival. But this year, we have the Heritage Bus Tour. 
Okay. So we have a new theme. Last year, our theme was uh, Sounds Like Freedom. This year, it's uh, a change going to come. And it's about the civil rights movement and uh, uh, and what was going on during those times. And we even have a little presentation, another original presentation mm -hmm. that we have, and it's called Change Don't Come. Okay, and is that is it is it just you? Is it? Uh, oh no, no, we have a cast of characters. Uh, once again, uh, the genius Miss mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> Miss uh, <laughs> Karen has come up with uh, an unbelievable script, but it's in keeping with the civil rights movement. Okay, and some of these are actually like our last year. It was actually a true story. We had to embellish on just a little bit, mm -hmm. but they were about true stories and black people in that era, you okay. know, circa that time. So that will be with this is 1960s, 50s, 60s? Right, place. right. And as a matter of fact, uh, I encourage people to go down to the Cultural Arts Center mm -hmm. because they have an exhibit there called I Am a Man. Yep. It's an unbelievable and it's a very poignant uh, exhibit. And as soon as you walk into the exhibit, you get that feeling there's a sign that says, colors only. So as soon as you walk in, you sort of get that feeling, you're sort of thrown back in time. Right. Yes. Yeah. So what would what you be presenting in this particular play? Would this be for national experiences? Would these be experiences of people locally during the civil rights these, era? We're, we're basing it on a little bit of both. We're trying to combine the two, try to combine what was happening here in Virginia mm -hmm. at that time and sort of relate it uh, to the world because Dr. King called that the music, because we have a lot of music mm -hmm. in this presentation, and Dr. King called that music of that time the soul of the mu movement. Yeah. So uh, we're trying to encompass the music and the feeling of that early time. Okay, now where would this be presented? It's gonna be, I believe we're gonna have a, we're not gonna have a stage, it's gonna be a bus tour. Okay. But it's gonna be, let me see, if I can, let me, let me see if I can haul off stage here. It's going to be at Emmanuel, Man Emmanuel AME Church, okay, right great. on North Street. Okay, yes, it is. All right, all mm -hmm. right. And what type of music will it be? Will it be just that period? Will it be harkening back to older songs? Well, we're going to have that period. We're going to have uh, some music, and we're going to present something uh, that a lot of people don't even know about. We're going to present 30 seconds of uh, the Sam Cooke song, Change Gonna Come, that was not originally uh, recorded for people to hear. Now, why wasn't that originally recorded? Uh, I don't know. If, because considered? I think it was because the wording of it was a little too strong because okay. the verse went... A little too true? It looked too <laughs> true because it went... Let me see if I can... And I go to the movie and I go downtown Somebody keep telling me don't hang around It's been a long, long time coming But I know change gonna come Oh yes it will so that's the verse. Oh, right, that was, uh, I, I can see that really was very yes, delivered. Yes, that really yes. hit it, yeah. Uh, can you can imagine at that time, you go downtown, you go to the movie, and people say, look, you can't come around here. Mm -hmm. You can't even go to the movies down here. Yeah. So we're trying to embrace the feeling of that time also. But well, that's great. People need to remember that. Right. And, and if you go to, I, I'll keep going back to the cultural uh, uh, museum, cultural center, Postal Cultural Center, if you go there, you see pictures. And they're not pictures of divisiveness. There's pictures of unity. Mm -hmm. Blacks and whites together, marching together. Yep. So that's what makes that exhibit so powerful. Because yeah. you can see there was a time where we did try to work towards a common ground. Right. Towards, you know, and we had, it had to be that way. It had to I, be I, that Otherwise way. it would not have happened. Couldn't yeah. be any other way. Yeah, but well, this sounds really great. I, really, I am looking forward to it again. All right, well, thank you so much for taking time to come here and tell us it about it. It is my pleasure. Thank you so very much. So be sure to check out and come to Change Gonna Come. That's Saturday afternoon, Memorial Day weekend. It's part of the Emoja Festival. It'll be held at Emmanuel A&E Church. It is free, but you do need tickets. To get tickets, simply go to the Emoja Festival website. Mark Palomarchuk, Director of Portsmouth Parks and Recreation, joins us next. He'll tell us about upcoming May events, as well as camps coming up this summer. Mark, welcome back to Portsmouth Now. Thank you for having me, Rob. So what's coming up uh, in, in May this year? Uh, we have quite a few items coming up in May. Uh, starting off, we have our annual lunchtime bike ride on May 19th at, at 12 o'clock, right in front of City Hall and the Atlantic Union Bank Pavilion. 
that helps us celebrate National Bike Week. So we always have, you know, bike to work days on that day. Mm. We have a nice leisurely ride through Old Town and Parkview neighborhoods and then ending up back at the pavilion that day. Okay, is this something people have to sign up for ahead of time? Yes, we ask that they register ahead of time if they can. Uh, they can register on our website at PortsmouthParks.com. They can also register the day of, so either okay. way. All right. And what else? I know the big thing this month is Emoja. Emoja is the, definitely a very big thing and it's back better than ever this year, I would say. Uh, it's our 31st annual Emoja Festival and we will be kicking it off on Friday night on uh, it's May 26th at 5.30 with the opening ceremony. Of course, there are tons of vendors out there, retail vendors and food vendors mm -hmm. and children's activities most of the time that we're out there as well. Um, we come back on Saturday and then finish up on Sunday with a gospel show. Okay, now where, where does the, where's the kickoff? Is this a pavilion? Uh, so it's actually right in front of the pavilion, which okay. we call Festival Park. Okay. Um, there is a paid concert. Boys and Men will be playing on Saturday night inside the pavilion. Okay, but but the rest of it is free? The rest okay. of it is free and open to the public, yes. Okay, now on Memorial Day weekend we have an event. Uh, it's been around for quite a while. Yes, we have our 139th consecutive Memorial Day parade. It is on Memorial Day itself, starting at 10 a.m. Starts out at IC Norcom High School, and it travels down High Street all the way down to Water Street. So there's plenty of opportunities for families to come out and get a good spot to view it. Okay, just line up anywhere on the street. Anywhere on the street is fine. Yeah, the roads will be closed, so it's nice and safe for the families. And we usually get about 70, 75 units in that parade, so it's a very long parade. Yeah, wow. Now what time should people start arriving if they want a good spot, would you if, say? If you want a good spot, just like anything else, show up <laughs> earlier is better. Uh, but I would say if you're there on the streets by 9.30, you should have plenty of space to find a good spot. All right, great. Now for the summer, summer's on the way. I, I know there are day camps and things going on this summer? Yes, yeah, so you know we consider Memorial Day weekend as our unofficial kickoff to summer. And we've been planning for summer camps way before then. Um, started back in December, actually. Okay. So our registration is open now. We have seven different summer camp sites throughout the city, uh, various uh, recreation centers of various elementary schools. Mm -hmm. um, you can see everything on our website at PortsmouthParks.com. And we have one of the most affordable rates in the area, $289 for the whole summer. Wow. So relatives have to pay. Oh, fantastic. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by and telling us about it. And uh, be sure to check out the Ports and Parks and Recreations website for more information. What makes a city more than a point on a map? What makes it a great place to call home or do business? or visit. What makes one city any different from another? In Portsmouth, we know the answer. It's our people and the places that make Portsmouth uniquely our own. All different kinds of people from all different kinds of places coming together in neighborhoods we all know by name. Craddock and Port Norfolk, Old Town and Truxton, Churchland and Cavalier Manor, West Haven, Park Manor. And the list goes on. Ours is a story steeped in 400 years of history. A history you can still see and hear and feel. All beautifully preserved for generations to come. And our future is just as bright. Today, Portsmouth is home to Virginia's first and only full service casino. And that's a big win for our city. At the ports that give our city its name, Portsmouth continues to make its mark as a strategic international seaport, a proud steward to the Navy's fleet, and a powerful partner to the emerging offshore wind industry. Our tourism industry is on the rise too, with new attractions, new businesses, 
and a few old favorites, all coming together to make our city more inviting than ever. What makes a city more than a place on a map? Him and her and her and him and them and this place and that place and all the other people and places that make Portsmouth home. There is a special place where wildness still grows, sheltered and cherished. A sanctuary for wildlife in the heart of bustling Hampton Roads. Welcome to Hoffler Creek Wildlife Preserve, the only urban wildlife preserve in the Commonwealth of Virginia. With 142 acres of preserved woodlands and wetlands and three miles of hiking trails, a riparian forest filled with pines and hardwoods, a meadow of native wildflowers and grasses, Lake Ballard, a large man-made lake, and a tidal creek with its expansive salt marsh teeming with life. You can explore and experience nature by kayak, or you can hike the winding woodland trails, or just watch natural life unfold from decks overlooking the lake, creek, and marsh, or from bird blinds throughout the preserve. You will find a warm welcome from our many diverse residents in this natural oasis of calm and serenity. Come visit Hoffler Creek Wildlife Preserve, a place where learning comes naturally and wonders never cease. Free and open to the public, Tuesday through Sunday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. Aaron Colson joins us next to tell us what's coming up this month at the Children's Museum of Virginia. Aaron, welcome back to Portsmouth Now. Thanks for having me, Rob. I know there's always something, not something, a lot of stuff going on at the Children's Museum of Virginia. So That's you're here to tell true. us what's coming up in May and maybe even what's coming up in the summer as far as like summer camps and things. Perfect, yeah, we have a lot happening this spring. So the first thing is Saturday, May 13th is the Youth um, Mental Health Awareness Summit that we're doing in partnership with Behavioral Health Services. It'll be up to 40 vendors outside on the mall as well as in the museum. And you can register that day to get free admission to the Children's Museum. Yeah, that's, is this a new event? Have you done this It's before? an event that Behavioral Health Services has been holding for the last couple years and we've just moved it to the Children's Museum that's this year. Great. So we're really excited for this opportunity. Okay, and then you, there were some other things. Yeah, we uh, move into mm. June. So in June, Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood opens. It's a terrific exhibit. Starts Garific. Saturday, June 3rd at the Children's Museum. And it's focused on Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood, the actual cartoon show mm -hmm. from PBS Kids. So we're really excited to have those characters and bring that village to life for children to explore and learn just some basic life lessons while they play. So will this be in the traveling exhibit area? It will, yes. And that'll be starting in June. Does that go? June 3rd through the summer. Okay. Yeah. All right. And then Saturday, June 10th, we're having Andalo's first birthday bash. Oh, wow. So we're gonna be celebrating birthdays in general, but celebrating with Andalo, our mascot. So we invite everybody to Andalo's birthday party on Saturday, June 10th. It's just part of our regular admission. We'll have additional games and activities. I'll try to make that. Yes, it'll be loads of fun. Okay. And then we head into July and we do have summer camps for mm -hmm. rising third through fifth grade. And then I have rising summer camps that still have space for my, or summer camps that still have space for my rising first through second graders. Mm -hmm. They're doing sensational science, which is a combination of art and science experiments to learn about color and movement. And there's a chance to do a summer camp around time travel as well. So it's going to oh, be wow. about travel and motion and some of the things that go with that. Okay. Now people are interested in these camps. What do they do? They can just go to childrensmuseumvirginia.com and check out summer camps. All the information's right there and you can register as well. Okay. Register online. That's right. And show up. That's right. Okay. And what hours are you open for the summer? Do you change hours? We're going to be open Wednesday through Sunday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. this summer. Okay. 
Yeah. Fantastic. All right. Well, thanks for stopping by. I know you're busy and need to get back across the street. <laughs> so true. Always a pleasure to have you here. And be sure, if you have not visited the Children's Museum of Virginia here in Old Town Porch, be sure that round up some kids and come. It is not to be missed. Old Town Portsmouth is home to many historic and diverse houses of worship, and the annual Steeple to Steeple Tour gives people a chance to visit each of these. We're joined next by Clifford King Harden, who will tell us about this year's Steeple to Steeple Tour. Clifford, welcome to Portsmouth Now. Thanks for having me, Rob. Now you're here to tell us about the Steeple to Steeple Tour. What is that exactly? Steeple to Steeple Walking Tour happens every year on the Saturday of Mother's Day weekend, and this is our 20th year. You gather at St. Paul's Church, you're met by walking docents who take you through the town and at each house of worship a docent will show you the art and architecture and history of the house of worship in Old Town Portsmouth. Um, it is a fundraiser for the Portsmouth Museum Foundation okay. here in Portsmouth and we're grateful that we've done this like herding cats, eight <laughs> houses of worship um, for the last 20 years have opened their doors. Okay. So we start with St. Paul's Roman Catholic that was built by Irish and Italian immigrants. We go there to the Jewish Museum and Cultural Center. There's different groups, so it's not exactly this route. Okay. Then Monumental United Methodist, Emmanuel A&E Church, which is great because that was a stop on the Underground Railroad, right. and you get to see where they hid the enslaved people, which you wouldn't see unless you're on this tour. <laughs> then um, St. John's Episcopal Church, where we'll have lunch and see their church. Then Court Street Baptist, First Presbyterian, and Trinity, which is the original Church of England parish oh, wow. in this area. So it's a great tour. It's walking, um, but it's not bad walking. It's walk a block or two, take a rest, walk a block or two, take a rest. Well, it's amazing in just a couple, because really it's just a couple of blocks, but you have this diverse collection. Right. Of very old churches right. and, 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 and even the Jewish worship. Museum, which is the youngest, is in only the early 1900s. Yeah. I mean, they're... And that's a very rare uh, Eastern European synagogue style architecture. Very, and you don't often get to see inside of there either. So there's a few of them that, and then there's little things. There's Tiffany windows at Trinity that are hidden away. So you can only see them if you're on this tour. You can't just sit in the worship space and right. see them. Um, at St. John's, there's a font that was made out of the mast of the USS Constitution in 1848 wow. um, that people have been baptized in ever since. So that is fascinating. There's just lots of different things that are just above and beyond the religious history. Right. Of these yeah. places. And, now, and there is some unique religious history here as well. There is. I mean, I know that um, the Methodist Church down here, Monumental. Is Monumental is one of the oldest in the South. Oldest, oldest in the United States, Old. continuously operating. And their fame claim to saying was um, Pastor Asbury, who went out and right. did the missionary work for almost all of the South, was one of their pastors. Yeah, he sort of brought Methodism to the U.S. He on did. a grand scale. Yeah. And Court Street Baptist is known for starting almost every Baptist church in Hampton Roads. They're really much, much older than you think. Their buildings younger, but they are a much, and much a older very beautiful, unique building too. It's it, when you think of a Baptist church, you don't, they think, don't of think of that. Court Street. <laughs> not at all. But it's, and it's, um, First Presbyterian has been in several locations, but they were able to save their stained glass and their pews after a fire that came from England. So wow. there's lots of little, little things that you'll hear on this tour that perhaps you wouldn't see. We did have one woman who went through a couple of years ago. She says, I'm trying to decide where to get married. So I'm going to go look <laughs> at all eight houses of worship to see which one I like the best. <laughs> So there's every, you know, lots of different reasons for taking the tour. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Now you said, okay, this tour starts at what time? Starts at nine o'clock mm -hmm. on May 13th. The tickets are available. They're $22. Um, you can go to portsvaevents.com mm -hmm. or you can go to stjohnsportsmouth.org and the tickets go through there. Um, the tickets are just on a list so you don't get anything physically back, but <laughs> you just come in at nine o'clock and start up and they'll split you into some groups and take you off walking around Old Town. And, it and it's over, oh, give or take three o'clock-ish, depending on how long everybody walks and talks. Yeah, but well, that sounds like a really neat. It's, it's really good worth your $22. Yeah. Um, and, and we did give you lunch in the, in the middle of that. So. That's fantastic. Well, thanks yeah. for joining us here to tell us about it. Good well, luck with it. Thanks and, for uh, inviting me. hope it continues. Me. And well, I hope so. After 20 years, we're gonna go for 20 more. <laughs> All right. So if you've ever wanted to see what some of these historic houses of worship in Old Town Portsmouth look like inside, be sure to attend the Steeple to Steeple Tour.
Our last guest today, Tom Sasso, joins us to tell us about another annual event, a post such as Portsmouth. Tom, welcome to Portsmouth Now. Well, thank you. Now, you're part of an event called A Post Such as Portsmouth. It's coming up in May. Tell us about this. What is this event about? I'm assuming it's history since you're dressed this way. <laughs> uh, yes, sir. So it's a, it's a living history event. Uh -huh. um, I kind of describe it as a, a muse, portable museum where we come out as living the story. And similar to um, Colonial Williams' work, what you might see up there. Mm -hmm. um, now, we use the British occupation of Portsmouth in 1781 is kind of just a talking point, but really what we're focused on is just all the deep, diverse, rich history of Portsmouth. So if you look at Portsmouth, you know, from, from its inception and creation and onward, um, not only is it just a, a deep history, but most of the structures are still here as well. Yeah. Um, and by us portraying British, we're able to talk about the various perspectives, not to singularly, you know, a, a single American perspective per se, but uh, perspective of the British, perspective of the African Americans, um, of the natives, everybody kind of all coming together and doing this time frame. So briefly, can you touch about how the perspective, for instance, of the British is different? They were, they were the enemy, but relative to Portsmouth history, can you dive into that just a little sure, bit? Sure, sure. Um, so we're really starting in 1775. Mm -hmm. um, the American Revolution starts off. Um, so from the American perspective, it's a war of independence. Uh, from the British perspective, it's it's um, it's more about loyalty, but for the African American, it's about their freedom. Okay. So Lord Dunmore, uh, in his proclamation, frees the slaves indentured to join the British, um, where they in turn fight for their own freedom. Mm -hmm. That continues on all the way through 1781, when uh, Benedict Arnold and the British troops come down here. Um, Lieutenant Colonel Simcoe comes down here with his Queen's Rangers, and he still has African American soldiers fighting for him, who are eventually freed up in Nova Scotia when the war is all done. Wow. Now, Benny Darnold, he, he was here for a time in Portsmouth, yes. wasn't he? Yeah. Uh, in fact, right across the street from where we are was his headquarters. The, the coffee shop. Yes. <laughs> yeah, the coffee shop. Uh, <laughs> wonderful place. Wonderful legacy for Benny Darnold. Yeah. Um, yeah, so he was down here. Um, he actually comes down with some pretty big names. Uh, Lieutenant Colonel Simcoe um, is kind of famous afterwards for actually passed. He becomes governor of Northern Canada, mm -hmm. passes one of the very first anti-slave acts it is eventually followed by England itself. Um, Captain Ewald is down here. His journals are taught in military colleges even today. Wow. Um, and one of his journals um, found around the time of World War II actually talks about some of the people in this area, uh, Captain Weeks and things out in uh, Princess Anne or, or Virginia Beach. Um, and we wouldn't have known any of that unless we had his wow. journal. And he's here. Lafayette comes in to capture Benedict Arnold Lafayette is here, so yeah, Portsmouth, really deep. Now, it was, was Arnold here towards the end of the war? Yes. Okay. So again, uh, 1775, Lord Dunmore, he's, he's at Portsmouth, and he uses Portsmouth to launch out into uh, what's then Princess Anne County, Virginia Beach, mm -hmm. Kemp's Landing, down to Great Bridge. When Bennett Arnold returns, he does the same thing. He uses Portsmouth, he reaches out to um, the, the Kemp's Landing area down by Great Bridge. So you see that all throughout the war, where Portsmouth is kind of a central area for Hampton Roads, and in fact, really, um, when the British are finally all here, they eventually move up to Yorktown where they surrender. Um, the only reason they move is because Norfolk at that point is burned, they don't have the supplies. Otherwise, this would have remained the center for the bridge. Wow, that's fascinating. Yeah. And we still have a lot of the buildings here in yes, Portsmouth we do, because yeah. yes. essentially we were on the wrong side, yeah, quote yeah. unquote. Yeah, because the British were here, um, and a lot of the burnings obviously by the British. Um, so they don't burn their own structures. Um, right, so they and, burn Norfolk where yeah, there were yeah. more patriots. Yeah. Um, so the, um, yeah, so a lot of the structures are still here. We have structures dating from the 1750s tavern and just about a block down here. Mm -hmm. Again, we mentioned Ben Arnold's headquarters. Um, Trinity Church right down the road at 1755-ish. Um, yeah, so um, again, amazing structures. If, if you're at all in architecture, this is the place to go. So. Okay, so now when is it, when, the event, when, when is this? What are the times? Where can people find out more about it? Are there tickets? Is it free? Uh, uh, so it's a free event, open to the public. Again, it's a living history event, Saturday, May 20th, um, from 9 to, nine to 4 o'clock. Um, coming out, we have uh, 18th century games for the kids. We have um, some military drill for the kids. 18th century dancing will be led by uh, Ms. Kathy here. <laughs> um, we have some demonstrations, some kind of vignettes 
um, where we can do some spy trials and, and Benedict Arnold will give some speeches and hopefully get, <laughs> get everyone to be loyalists. And then where so, do they come to? Is it is there a central hub in Old Town? Uh, so it, it's actually from here at the Welcome Center on High Street, uh, just in the intersection here between okay. High and Middle Street, and all the way down to the Portsmouth Arts and Culture Center, uh, High Street and Court Street right there. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. For coming here, and it sounds like a fascinating event. Again, just a new perspective on the Revolutionary yep. War in Portsmouth. And, and I will invite everyone to come out and dress out in their best 18th century costumes. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for taking thank time to come much. here. Thank you both, too. And be sure to check out a post such as Portsmouth. That's it for our show today. If you'd like to find out more about any events featured on today's show or any other events taking place in May, simply log on to portsvacation.com and then come to Portsmouth, where if you give us a day, we'll give you a vacation. I'm Rob Lauer. Join me next month for the June episode of Portsmouth Now.